Anthropology is the study of human bones, past and present. It is the study of bones and how they can tell a story and solve a case. Anthropology was used to solve many crimes and cases, including John Wayne Gacy, a.k.a. the Killer Clown. According to the Crime and Investigation Network, John Wayne Gacy grew up in Chicago and was the second of three children. He was raised Catholic and attended Catholic schools. He also did activities such as Boy Scouts and having part-time jobs. Although he had a pretty normal childhood, some unfortunate things got in the way. One day on the playground, Gacy was standing near the swings and got accidentally hit in the head by one of them. This accident caused a blood clot in his head and was not found until he was 16 years old. Also, at the age of 17, he was diagnosed with a heart ailment that was unable to be treated by doctors. Along with his medical conditions, he did not really have a great relationship with his father. He did get along fine, however, with his mother and siblings, but there was always tension between him and his father. His dad was an angry, abusive drunk who would physically abuse their mother and verbally abuse their children. This caused turmoil between the family, and some may think this made Gacy do what he did and become a murderer. Crime and Investigation Network also states that Gacy was a businessman with his contracting company. Also, Gacy would host parties for friends, family, and neighbors. He would dress up as a clown to entertain children at hospitals and including himself in organizations working to make his community a better and stronger place. So to everyone he knew or knew him, it came as a great surprise when his crimes and 33 murders of boys and young men were revealed. Catherine Ramsland from the Crime Library said that Gacy would lure his victims in by offering something or some type of bribe. He would rape, torture, and violently murder them. After his killings continued for a few years, he was finally discovered as being the killer. What helped identify him as the killer was that a boy was lured in by Gacy being offered to share a joint. He drugged the teen and brought him to his house and raped him. But instead of killing him, he let the boy wake up and he was actually fully clothed and under a statue in Chicago's Lincoln Park. He told authorities that he had remembered some things and it brought suspicion to Gacy's house. Once authorities were there, most of the bodies were found in the crawl space of his house. Ramsland also says that Gacy went to trial and was convicted for 33 murders and sentenced to be put to death for 12 of these murders by lethal injection. Don Bobbin from the Huffington Post says that today more bodies are being found at the ground of the place where Gacy used to work. Even though Gacy has been dead for many years now, they still tie their findings to him in the court today to give the families of the victims the feeling of justice and a peace of mind. With his family living at his house, Gacy knew he could not keep all the bodies there, which caused him to bury the bodies elsewhere. With our new advanced technology we have today, we are able to check the grounds of his work by using something called ground-penetrating rays. Bobwin also said that the ground-penetrating ray method, also known as the GPR method, allows efficient and accurate three-dimensional mapping of buried archaeological sites. By pushing this machine around like a lawnmower, it allows you to find where bones have been buried. Once they find an area where the machine says there are bones, they dig for them. If the bones are recovered, they are sent to a lab where different technology and chemicals can be used to determine different characteristics about the bones. Bodies were found at his previous work, and detectives and forensic scientists are tying it to the Gacy murders. Although bones like the humerus and femur cannot specify or identify an individual exactly, it can help identify age and approximately how tall if they were given the right bones. By measuring the maximum length of the humerus and femur, and by using a progression formula, it can help calculate the approximate height. Also, teeth can help a lot in trying to limit the amount of matches to find an individual. So no matter what the crime, if bones are left behind or become discovered, the suspect is not off the hook yet because every bone has a story and will remain to speak out until justice is served.